We can treat a pre-trained image classification model as a arbitrary feature extractor, as shown here, a VGG16 model. Uh, so allow the input image to propagate forward, stop at a pre-specified layer. Usually we use a network without the top fully connected layer, and then uh, take the output as our features. Those uh, pre-trained image classification models, on one hand, have state-of-the-art architecture and on the other hand, have pre-trained weights, which are trained on challenging data set like ImageNet or COCO. A few examples of uh, pre-trained network are VGG16, ResNet, Inception, etc. So we can then use multiple pre-trained image classification model as feature extractors, run all training and testing image to each network, save the output features, concatenate the output feature together, and add a fully connected layer on top of that to distinguish new classification labels. So the benefit of doing that is, first of all, uh, save a lot of training time. So in the traditional transfer learning, we freeze the CNN layers of the pre-trained uh, model to avoid destroying any of the information they contain during future uh, training rounds. So only classification layers were trainable. So if we want to improve the model even further, we can unfreeze the entire model and re retraining it with a lower uh, learning rate. We call it uh, fine tuning. Uh, those two steps uh, will allow the computation resources in time. However, in this uh, feature extraction workflow, each image is going to run through each image classification model only once. Second benefit would be robust. It learns from uh, all the pre-trained image classification model. So the drawbacks would be um, you cannot fine-tune the model like traditional transfer learning. Let's go to Jupyter Notebook and implement what we just talked about. Let's define a function called redGap. It receives a model name, the image size, pre-processing function. It output the image features generated by the model for the training set, test set, and the label for the training set. For the pre-processing function, when you load a single image, you get the shape of one image, which is image height, image width, and channels. However, Keras works with batches of images. So the first dimension is used for the number of images you have. In order to create a batch of images, you need an additional dimension, which is the samples. So basically you have four dimension, samples, image height, image width, and channels. The pre-processing input function is meant to adequate your image to the format the model requires. Basically what it does is that it adds a sample dimension to the data, it normalizes the data to either zero to one or minus one to one. We take the model name from model, construct the model by specifying input of the base model input. The base model is in the middle, and then the output is a global average pooling 2D layer to reduce the output feature size. So we create a chain data generator and a test data generator using image data generator flow from directory. This allows us to feed image data to each model in batches. We specify the training and testing directory, image size, batch size, class mode. But the data cannot be shuffled because we want to concatenate to the output layer later using the same order. The image data generator, usually we have the option to rescale data augmentation, validation split, etc. We cannot rescale the data here because pre-processing input did that for us. For the simplicity, I didn't do data augmentation here. Uh, let me know if uh, data augmentation helps here in the comment below. So we, we call the predict function to uh, run batches of images through the model and generate output as features. Please note that 
uh, we need to get output feature from both training and testing data. So now we can save the output feature as .h5 files. So for each model, I call it gap and model name .h5. The .h5 file will have output feature for training set, test set, and label of training set. Let's run the write gap function and specify the model name, image size, batch size, and processing uh, input for each model. Depending on your GPU, you can adjust the batch size to fit your VRAM size. I'm also showing the GPU Z stats for some of you who may be interested. Now we can concatenate all features together by column. Since our training set is grouped by class, it's important to shuffle the training set as validation split in fit function will take the last samples as validation data, which means if we do not shuffle the training set first, the validation data will only contain one class. We can simply add a drop-off layer and a classification layer to build a binary classification neural network. We train the model by calling fit function. It reaches 99.5% accuracy in a few seconds.